New Year, a new look, and today on Ginny Vision Kings Oak, it's Electroglide. Electroglide is a 1985 game by English Software based in Manchester in the UK that originally came out on the Atari 8 bit, so that's where we will start. Not a cartridge game, but a tape and disc game. $8.95 for the cassette, $12.95 for the disc. Impressive looking intro screen with vector graphics. The advert for the game promises Atari, Commodore and Amstrad action. Also a Spectrum version coming soon. There was no Spectrum version. You start up with the menu system here. There's three control systems for how the joystick responds. So I'm going to go to default, and there are three different maps, Australia, the UK, and America, to select from. And there we go. We're into the game, and it's all very dark, and we're on a road, and we're inside some kind of car, and there's some really funky music going on, and wow, there we go. Look at this. Look at this. The controls are um, somewhat sluggish. We're moving very fast down a road. There are trees and things coming towards us. And what's this? It's some kind of object, yes. This isn't a conventional racing game. What you have to do is avoid the objects that appear on the racing track, which is easier said than done. The square objects stay static. The round objects actually chase after you. And uh, yeah, you don't get much warning when they're in when they're in front of you, especially when you've just come around a corner. You think there might be some kind of thing on the dashboard that tells you that something is approaching, but no. Quite often, it's a matter of luck rather than judgment than uh, actually not hitting it. And sometimes a plane comes along and drops columns onto the track, and that's game over. So I'm going to have to do a bit better than that. Over to the Commodore 64. Which um, has an interesting colour palette here. And rather than black, we're blue inside the tunnel. Not quite sure why. And outside, no, because the sky is black outside. This is, this is a rather interesting colour scheme. Especially coming over from that Atari. The road drawing routines on both versions we've seen so far are very impressive. C64 version is slightly slower and uses the flashing to give an impression of speed. Another object. The aim is to get through each level where there is a tunnel at the end and then go into the next zone without hitting the object. I mentioned the steering controls at the beginning of the game. What they do is they select where your joystick controls are the most sensitive when on different parts of the track. Do you want it more sensitive in the middle of the track and then tailing off at the edge of the track? Do you want something more even? The problem with this is it simply doesn't work. It, it, you, want to get, you want the controls to respond the same way all the way through. I don't know why they've done this. It's obviously to try and mitigate the limitations of a digital control, the problem is, no other game feels the need to do this, and for very good reason. It means that if the objects you're trying to avoid are in the middle of the track, but you've set the controls to be less responsive in the middle of the track, then you're not going to avoid them. You just want the controls to respond properly all the way through. And it just, it's just maddening. Over to the Amstrad CPC, this game was released at the very end of 1986, reviewed in the February 1987 edition of Amstrad Computer User. The code of this CPC version is DJH Software, who gave us 3D Stunt Rider and uh, Road Blasters as well, So and Super Cycle. So he had a road engine going, so um, presumably just reused, reused that or reworked it. Same setup on the CPC. Got to select a joystick profile and then which level you want to play on. Music on this version is by David Whittaker. 
I'm not sure if he did the other versions, but I definitely know he did this version. I know it's nice and colourful. Certainly better than the C64 version with its bizarre colours. Large sprites coming towards you, but um, the game somewhat slows down the larger those sprites get. Amstrad Computer User gave this game a rather mixed review. Nigel, Liz and Colin. Yes, Amstrad Computer User had a th bizarre three reviewer system. Nigel gives it 7 out of 20. Liz gives it 16 out of 20 and Colin gives it 4. And it's if you thought it was hard to avoid the objects on the Atari version, it's pretty much worse on the CPC version. Mainly because the game slows down when the object gets close and therefore the response rate from the joystick goes out of the window. Even the best review on the Amstrad computer user review mentions the game would be so much better if it had cars in it. And yes, that's the thing, right? That's the that's the elephant in the room about Electric Glide. You've got these objects on the screen that you just have to avoid, and that's the game, that's it. Other than that, it's just get a high score, and a high score is achieved by how far you get and how many objects you avoid. But there's no actual aim other than surviving. Whereas if there were cars on the get on the on the track, you could race against them, get first place. But there's nothing, there's nothing else. You can't even shoot the objects that are coming towards you. So by the time you've played level one, you've seen everything. You've seen absolutely everything. And for all the good this looks on the Amstrad and the Atari versions, there's just, it feels like a tech demo. Someone's got a really nice road, ro road routine going and um, that's it. And sometimes you're not even sure, like just then, why you managed to avoid the objects. And level one, the Amstrad feels like it goes on forever. Back on the Atari version. Now, I mentioned the David Whittaker music on the Amstrad. Apparently the music itself on the Atari is by a guy called, or a lady called, Yiku. And apparently it's 16-bit. So the game manual claims. But um, David Whittaker certainly did that Amstrad conversion. And if you hadn't noticed, this is level 2 now on the Atari 8-bit. You'll notice it's the Atari 8-bit because it's not slowing down when the objects come towards you and the programmer hasn't copped out of the 3D objects. This game sold around 50,000 copies on the Atari, by the way. I know Atari owners hold this game in such high regard, especially because it was so impressive when you first saw it. But um, to my mind, it's just a tech demo. There's no real game here. This is the, the C64 version. Be careful not to touch the walls in the tunnel sections because you will come to an instant stop. And I do mean instant. So we've moved on, and uh, the colour scheme is equally dreadful on the C64. Oh, the users on Lemon64 give this a bad, bad review. Back on the Amstrad version, I'm just looking at some of the other reviews as well. I'm assuming computer and video games were looking at the Atari version when they said the game was superbly presented and extremely stylish. Computer Gamer, I don't know what magazine that is, said it's the best road racing game they have ever seen. And PCW say one of the most addictive high-speed adrenaline racing games I've yet seen. Uh, I'm assuming that was all about the Atari version. I saw the screenshots of this back in the day. I thought, that looks impressive. But it looked, it looked empty in those reviews, and yeah. Now onto level two on the Amstrad, and... Yeah. It's just... Empty. It's a void of a game. Looks pretty. It's, it's what, like, like... Some people said about Shadow of the Beast on the Amiga. It sold a lot of computers, but there's not much of a game there. 
not necessarily my opinion, it's something people say. And Electric Glide must have sold a lot of Atari 8 bits. Wouldn't have sold a lot of Amstrads or C64s, judging from the state of this. At least it, we do have the 3D squares on the Amstrad version, although it doesn't have to cause a slowdown. As I mentioned, there are three different scenarios in the game on all three versions. This is the American set of levels. And you're going to get something slightly different, aren't you? No, what you get is a slightly different colour scheme. And that's it. It's not even a game where you can really memorise the track. And you get no warning of the corners either. Going to get past that bit? No. Ugh. Slow down as the cube goes past. So does another cube go past. You can't go off the track, but you do slow down a bit if you hit the, hit the edge, at least when you're not in the tunnels. Back on the C64, and yeah. And the game is capable of telling, giving you warning there's corners coming up because... It does put signs up at the side of the road occasionally, so why doesn't tell you you need to slow down? I don't know. I'm going to get it so much in the neck for saying I don't like this game from the Atari owners anyway. I don't think any Amstrad or C64 owner could particularly defend their versions. It's not awful. It's not awful, but the problem is that... Yeah, there's just nothing there. And the game was re-released on budget about a year after full price release. And for a budget price on Mastertronic for $1.99, I'm assuming it was $1.99, it wouldn't have been quite as bad. And back on the Atari, just, the game just goes on the same as before. Hit the objects, miss the objects, who knows? It's mainly down to luck. And you're just witnessing a tech demo, really. Electroglide by English Software. Well, it's certainly a technically impressive game on the Atari 8 bits. The graphics look great, got fantastic music, and it moves incredibly fast, and all those 3D objects. The problem is, as I keep saying, play the game for a few minutes, you've seen the lot, and then it's just trying to survive really and most of that will be down to luck the joystick controls are absolutely diabolical terrible and if you've got any delay in reaction times for example playing this on lcd displays or capture it's going to be even worse it's downhill on the other versions from the atari version c64 version is unnecessarily ugly and I can't blame the Commodore users for hating on the game, really. Amstrad version at least looks like the Atari version when it's static, but the slowdown when the objects come towards you is quite annoying. And you just become conscious that you'd quite like some cars or bikes or something on the track to race against. Overall, loaded up on your Atari for the graphics and audio and the, and the technical prowess of the programmer. But I'm afraid it's not a particularly good game.